Welcome to 2024. I'm so excited that you're choosing to listen to this podcast at the beginning of the year. It has definitely seen some growth and definitely some change, well, changes. I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty much doing the same thing. A lot of exciting things happened last year. I was able to interview some great authors and kind of start that segment of the this podcast. I don't know yet what I want to do moving forward with this podcast like this year. I haven't sat down yet and really like grinded out the goals that I want to make or like really what I want to do. So for the meantime, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to happen in the next couple of days, but um, in the meantime, I am just going to be doing what I love and bringing these books to you and talking about them, talking about it with my mom and sisters and bringing authors on. Like I'm still going to stick to that until I really figure out like the move that I want to make or really what I want to do with this podcast. Uh, I still am very happy doing this podcast. I still love it. I still look forward to every episode. I am maybe going to go more into the like the YouTube realm. I mean, it's still going to be a podcast on whatever you listen to streaming, but I think I want to move it more towards YouTube and more video. I don't know yet. Just lots of things up in the air, but I mean, it's still here. Just know that I'm not going anywhere. This podcast isn't going anywhere. And I still enjoy it. I still love it. I still love books. I'm still constantly reading. I feel like I didn't read as much this year. I think I read like 78 books, I want to say. But year, the year before, I feel like I got over 100. But I don't know. It's It has <laughs> a lot of things have changed this year. I mean, it changed the year before, too. Um, cause we did move to Arizona this past year and I went completely like no job for since June. Yeah. I haven't had a job the last half of the year and it's been kind of, it's been interesting. Like I have learned a lot about myself. Um, I've never not had a job. And so I think the <laughs> six months I just didn't really know what to do do with myself like I wanted to create habits I wanted to create routine but I just didn't know how and so I want to share a couple of my new year's goals with you guys they're not podcast related um but I know I don't know I wanted to bring you guys more into my life this next year just be more open I guess I don't know it has some pros and cons on if I want to share a lot of things about my life um but for the most part I feel like I'm pretty open um, and keep you updated. I will say, um, we probably are going to move again this year. I don't know when, I don't know where, but we're just kind of in that phase right now where it's like, Hey, let's go and try out all these different places and see what we want to do, where we want to put down roots, where we want to just start a family. Um, so yeah, most likely we will probably move again this year, which I'm totally fine with. I I'm liking not really staying in one place. It does suck moving, but I don't know. It's just kind of exciting. And speaking of like this past six months and not having a job, um, I want to create a morning routine. That is one of my number one goals for this year is to have a morning routine. And of course, it's going to change with like circumstances and where we're at or like if I do get a job or just anything like that. But for the most part, like I... I'm envisioning and manifesting that I wake up when the husband leaves for work, which is around 9 a.m. So I get up 9 a.m. I put on some like walking clothes, workout clothes. I don't know. And I go for a 30 minute walk and wherever I go, however far, just 30 minute walk. And even if like, cause I want to get one of those walking pads, even if it's a walking pad and I just walk for 30 minutes, that's what I want to do. And then I am going to have like a cleaning schedule. I mean, I'm pretty good about cleaning our house anyways, but there's no flow to it. There's no like rhyme or reason. Like if I see something, I'm like, oh, I I need to clean that. Like, but I want to have like a little schedule for myself. So go on a walk and then I clean what I need to for that day. I take a shower and then I want to work on podcast stuff for a couple a couple hours and I want to try and pre-record episodes because I mean if you know me like I love to procrastinate and it's usually the day before the podcast goes up that I'm doing all this and I kind of want to 
be more prepared or have like more go into these podcasts. And so I can do like more hype or like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be able to announce what I'm going to be talking about. Like the couple days before leading up to the episode, instead of being like, Hey, it's here. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, I've been doing that for two years now, so we'll see if I actually even change that. Um, but another big goal that I want to do, and it might sound so silly, but I want to delete the Amazon app. And yes, I could go on my computer and go on that, but that's a lot more effort than just going on the app and just scrolling and buying. And I just want to change that. I I definitely know that my spending habits have changed drastically since I don't have a job. And I've been way more conscious of what I've been buying. And that has actually been a huge improvement this past year. And I want to keep continuing that. And so I feel like my last big thing, because I don't have any other shopping apps on my phone, except for the Amazon. And I feel like that's my last big hurdle that I need to do is to delete that app. And it's going to be hard. I know it will. I know I'll probably re-download it a couple times, but that's okay. That's how change happens. So those two are my biggest is a routine, create a morning routine and delete the Amazon app. And of course there's others, you know, um, the husband and I sat down last night and we wrote down some couple goals. We wrote down individual goals. We wrote down like our manifestation for the year. We wrote down like where we see each other or where we see us, uh, at the end of this coming, like at the end of 2024, like where we imagined like us sitting down on our couch and where we would be and what would we be doing? And it was just a nice little exercise And don't feel like you missed out on that, you know, like you can always do these once a month, once a week, like you can always make goals whenever it doesn't have to be at the beginning of the year, like don't feel like, like left behind or don't feel like downtrodden because you like didn't make certain goals. You know what I'm saying? Like you can make goals every day, every morning, wake up and make a goal. And you can totally do that and, and start small, like, um, cause that makes a lot of things easier. And that's probably, I'll probably do in like the next week or so is break down my big goals into smaller goals and how I want to achieve that. But you probably didn't come onto this podcast for a go- a goal lecturing sermon. <laughs> cause that's what I feel like I've been doing for the past 10 minutes or yeah, that's what I've, I feel like I've been doing that for the past 10 minutes, but I, you probably get it. You probably understand. Um, but just know I'm here for you. I'm here for your goals. Um, if you need any support, I'm here. Just, uh, just message me. And that's another thing that I want to try and do is have a platform that we can talk about like all of this, like books and the episodes. And so I'm trying to figure out what avenue I want to take. Like, if I want it to all be on my YouTube or if I want it to be on like a separate website that we can all go on and talk to, or if I want to use like, I think it's called Fable. I don't know. Maybe Fable. That's the app that it's like a book club app. There's that. Or I know that there's like the communities on Instagram that you can create like a little group that way. I don't know yet. I don't know what I want to do, but I I do want to make it more accessible to have these little chats about the books and the episodes and be more of a community. So I'm definitely looking into that. Um, I did want to update you on what we did listen to for audiobooks on our trip to Idaho for the husband and I. Um, we left Friday morning, the 23rd, yes, the 23rd early morning, like at 6 a.m. And we tried, (laughs) we tried multiple audiobooks and podcasts and we just couldn't, we just couldn't get into it. So I'll give you an update. The first one that we did try is the last thing he told me by Laura Dave or Davis. I think it's Laura Dave. Um, I was interested. I really liked it. It was, I think we got like five chapters in and the husband was like, I don't, want to listen to this and I was like okay I'll listen to it on my own which I haven't continued on yet but now that we're back and everything's settled I am going to continue to listen to that one because I thought it was interesting we also did try and listen to fairy tale by Stephen King I again was interested in it 
husband was not. So I think that's another on my list that I'll listen to. Um, we also tried the Montauk monster. Terrible. I did not like it. It was like a dramatization of it. Awful. Like literally got in like 20 seconds and I was like, no, I don't like this. Um, then we started listening to the silent patient, which I've listened to that before. It's by Alex Michaelides. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Um, I really like that book. Husband was like, yeah, this is fine. I'm not really into it. So I'm like, okay, well, I know that you will like The Housemaid by Frida McFadden. And if you listen to that episode, you know that how many times I mentioned her name. And I was like, I know you will like this. I know you will. So we listened to it. And I loved listening to it for the second time because I was able to pick up little things. And the husband loved it. Like he really loved it. And so he wanted to listen to the second one. And I was like, yeah, that's great. Um, but then he was like, why don't we listen to one that you haven't listened to from her? And I was like, uh, oh, great. Okay. So we listened to the Never Lie uh, by Frida McFadden. And it was really good. Like, of course, there was like the twist at the end. And I was just like waiting for it, trying to like see who's what. And she's so good about misleading you where you're thinking that this character is really bad, but really it's a different one. And it just, she's so good at that, that it, it was a really, I really enjoyed listening to it. And I think the husband did too. So I am a tried and true Frida McFadden fan. Like I believe anything that she has wrote will just be so good. So I am going to probably be listening to more of her books in the coming year. And now we're getting into the recap of 2023. And I tried to find books that came out in 2023 and that, of course, that I read in 2023. There was a lot that had come out in previous years that I did read in 2023, so I left those out. Um, but there is, yeah, there are quite a few. And none of these are in order because I, I really couldn't rank them, honestly. Um, I'll tell you ones that, I liked the very most, I guess you could say, but for the most part, like nothing really stuck out to me except for, of course, like the fourth wing books, which we'll talk about those. Um, I feel like this year was the year of Hannah Grace and also the year of actually Emily Henry has had her year before. I think 2022 was more Emily Henry year. Henry's years. Um, but yeah, I feel like the 2023 was very much Hannah Grace and her icebreaker wildfire, which I haven't read still yet. I think I'm going to actually put that to my very top of my TBR list. Um, so icebreaker was up there, which I did enjoy. Not the best book I've ever read, but I did really enjoy it. And that was her debut, which I think was really great. Of course, Tessa Bailey. I feel like she really grew her TikTok following this past year. And just like the stories that she comes up with these concepts like right out of the air, I feel like that became really popular. And so she had 2023 was also her year. Um, I'm excited for 2024 to, to see more of Kate Golden. Um, because her novel, A Dawn of Onyx, was very good. It it came out in December of 2022. Um, but I'm really excited for her and her career. Like, I can see a lot of great potential from her. And so I'm excited to see more from her. But I do have The Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. I have that on, like, my list that I did enjoy. I enjoyed the second book. I think it's Unfortunately Yours. I enjoyed that one more than the first one. Um, but that series... It's very solid is on the list. Of course, The Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden is on my list. Um, 2023 did bring us more Lucy score. Uh, it came, it brought book two and book three, um, The Things We Hide from the Light and Things We Left Behind. And I think the very first book is still my favorite. And then the second book is my next favorite. The third book is my next favorite, I guess. Um, but I did love all three of them. Um, it was also the year that brought us Ice Planet Barbarians. Even though it did come out in 2015, I feel like this is the year that everyone became aware of it and talked about it and recommended it um, by Ruby Dixon. So that was a great series to bring about. I think, how many did I read? Like nine? Mm, no, I think I read like three, actually. 
Um, and then, yes, this is also the year of Rebecca Yaros. 2023 was her year. Um, we saw Fourth Wing, which I'm not exactly remembering when that specifically came out. But, of course, fourth year just was 2023. Everyone was obsessed and still is obsessed with, with Fourth Wing. And also, like, it's the year that I read her Full Measure series. It's the year she came out with In the Likely Event. And I feel like, yeah, 2023 was definitely Rebecca Yarrow's as well because we saw Iron Flame 2. Um, Iron Flame also, not Iron Flame 2. Um, did I haven't checked any of the socials today, but did we see a book come out by her? I don't know. I need to check because didn't we see like something on Amazon or something that showed that maybe another book was coming out? I need to check. I haven't checked at all. Um, so yeah, those books were all on my list um, by Rebecca Yaros. And then also Winter Renshaw, her series, the Paper Cut series, blew me away. All three books blew me away. If you like contemporary, more kind of like corporate, um, I guess they weren't all corporate, uh, but more serious, like all three of those books were so solid. They were incredible. So those are definitely top, like high on my list. It's Hate Mail, Yours Cruelly, and Dear Stranger. They were just, they were solid books. Um, I'm excited to see more from Kate Canterbury. Um, I have her book Shucked on here. That one was really good. So I'm hoping to see a second one soon. Um, I don't think Mariana Zapata, now that I'm thinking about it, came out with a book last year. If she did, it was at the beginning of the year. She only comes out with like one a year and it, it's, it makes me really sad. And so I think, um, I think one came out at the beginning of January or February of last year. So I'm hoping this coming like six months or so the beginning of six months there will be one by her I'm just I just hope and pray um yeah so we have Emily Henry on there we have happy place that I did read in 2023 she does have one called funny story coming out on April in April 2024 it already has great reviews so I'm guessing people have been sent like the arc of it and have been reviewing it that way but I'm really excited for that one to come out because I do enjoy her books um, we also saw the Cherish series or the Crave series and the last book called Cherish. Um, that one came out in 2023 by Tracy Wolf, and I'm excited for her new series. Um, it's like a spinoff of it with like different characters. And she was going, I think she said that she wrote like the book, like the first book, but then she's like, no, this book is going to be the fourth book. And so now she's writing like books one through three to lead up to this fourth one and I'm like that's an interesting way to do it but she just felt called by these certain characters to have their books and so I'm just really excited for her to release those or write them or whatever she's doing because I do enjoy all of her books so she is always going to be a top favorite um, and then we also saw the second book by Amy Leah X's and O's which is the second book in the influencer series and I enjoyed both of those they were very very good um and so, yeah, that was on my list. I definitely recommended those. They're just funny. Like, they're funny. They're wholesome. They're cute. They're spicy. They're just really, like, they're just fun. I just really like that series. Um, but, yeah, so those were, like, my top standout. I do want to actually talk about, um, let's see, Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. I don't know if I've mentioned it in the past two episodes because I did start reading it a couple weeks ago or a week ago I'm in the third one and I I'm pretty sure the fourth one hasn't come out yet um but it is so good it's so good I think I did a TikTok on it actually and that's why I mentioned it but oh my gosh it is incredible it's a very kind of like simple writing it's a it's a very in-depth story, but the world building is very clear. The characters are clear. I get kind of annoyed with the main female character, um, but the story keeps changing and evolving and so many twists and turns that are kind of predictable, but you don't know how they're going to come into play. Like it is such a good story. I love those books, like all three books. Like, so yeah, the third one kind of has a little bit of a lull in it. 
but they just keep you on your toes. Like really a lot of things just come into play in it and like surprise you and you just don't know. But also the main story or like, it's kind of predictable if any of this is making sense, you know? Um, but I highly recommend if you just don't want to start on any books on your TBR and you just need something fresh for the year, definitely pick up Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. That series, it's a very quick read. You'll get through them pretty quickly, but just amazing. Absolutely. So, so freaking good. And I'm excited to finish the third one. And I am excited to kind of redo my TBR list as well, because I feel like I've had some books on there for a long time. And so I need to kind of just read the back of the book again or just really dedicate to read these books or just take them off, you know, or put them on like a side shelf and be like, you know, eventually I'll get there, but maybe not in the next couple months. Um, so I, I really think I need to reevaluate that. Um, I do want to start building more of my physical library. Um, so far, I just pretty much have books that I've read and loved, and that's what I buy. Especially because if we're going to be moving again, I don't want to have to move all of these different books. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good a good year. And I saw this thing on Instagram, and I don't know why it really just like stuck out to me. Um, but let me pull it up really quick. So it, I, I found it off of Sisters Village on Instagram and it says 2023 equals seven. The number seven in numerology is all about inner work, self-discovery through reflection and spending time inwards. This year wasn't about the results. It was about growth through introspection. And I really felt that. I feel like I've done a lot of inner work and especially the past six months being home, not being around a lot of people, just really being able to take time for myself to figure out who I want to be, what I want to do, everything. Like even last night, I was going through a lot of different scenarios and how I would feel if this happened and what I would do if this happened, like a lot of, lot of inner work. And then it says 2024 equals eight. The number eight in numerology is all about abundance, success, karmic lessons, and stepping into your power. Next year is more achievements based. It will be the year of taking responsibility for your own actions and putting in the work to create the life that you have been dreaming of. And I'm ready. I'm ready to put in the work. I'm ready for growth. I'm ready. Like, I think this year is going to be a big year. I don't know what that entails, but I have a positive outlook. Just all the things going into the universe. If you don't talk to the universe, it's not going to help you. You you have to talk things into existence. You have to manifest. And I'm still very, very new to manifesting and really talking things into existence, but I'm willing to try. It's better than being negative and sitting there and doing nothing. Like if you take baby steps every day to change something, you're, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. And even if you are not looking forward to going, going to work tomorrow, what's one little change that you can do to make it a little bit better? You can wake up, drink some water and say, today's going to be a great day. Like today is going to be a great day. I am going to have a great day today. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And it changes your mindset. It changes your perspective on things. Like if you just go into it saying, today's going to be a great day. It's going to be a good day. Sure, some things could happen, of course, and it could not be a great day. But if you just have that outlook like, oh, you know what? I got into some traffic today. That's okay. Like I hope everyone's safe. Like I am going to do this instead. You know, like you just have to change your mindset. And that's one thing I definitely learned this past year. Um, I read The Secret, um, which really goes into changing your mindset, changing your perspective, changing and just positivity, like just so much positive that it's just a, a simple thought. Just change your thinking and that will get you so many different places. I feel like this episode has really been a lot of preaching, <laughs> a little bit of sermon, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so hopefully it's fine if you tuned it out, whatever. Um, but I'm just really excited uh, for this next year. And I wish all the best to the authors. 
um, current authors, new authors, people that are trying to submit their book, people that are starting to write a book. Um, I just, I hope you have courage to continue because the world needs to see your books. The world needs to read your stories. And I'm here for that. I really am. I'm excited um, to just grow this community even more and get out of my shell. Uh, I feel like I am in quite a shell where I'm like, oh, I don't really want to start a book group. I don't want to have to talk to people. I don't want to have to do it. But I'm like, you know what? It's growth. I want to build it. That's the thing. I want to do it. I just have to kick my own butt. I just have to get over the blockage that I have in my head and just do it. I just got to do it. So just got to take those little tiny baby steps and that makes it a lot better. So I hope that gave you some suggestions on how 2023 went and I hope the best for Rebecca Yaros because I think this next year is going to be pretty crazy for her and uh, for us as the readers as well. I think that there are some really big things in motion from a lot of different authors and I'm just really, really excited to see where it goes. I really am. And um, here's to 2024. May it bless us with more books to read. I'll talk to you guys later.